Okay, ladies and gentlemen, allow me to introduce this lesson to you on nominal and effective interest rates for grade 11. And you all know my name, Melule Shabalala, and I will present this lesson to you on how to introduce nominal and effective interest rates for grade 11 so that they won't forget this formula. Okay, my name, Melule Shabalala. Okay, first of all, before we continue with this lesson, we have to remind ourselves that failing maths is not an option. And if it was, I was not going to take it. It might be dead, Okay, let us just continue. First of all, in, in nominal and effective interest rate, we have to remind ourselves the first thing. We have what we call a nominal and effective interest rates. Okay, then we have to know how to convert between the nominal, nominal interest rate and effective interest rate using the formula. And we have to remind ourselves the formula for the form compound interest that we have a form that A is equal to P into 1 plus I exponent N. And how does A and P and I and N stand for? Please watch me. For, please watch Another video that I have presented about this one. And we have to remind ourselves also the compounding periods. If they say compounded annually, we know that we have to divide interest by 1 and multiply by n by 1. If they say semi-annually or half-yearly, we know that we have to divide our interest by 2 and multiply by our n by 2. If they say compounded monthly, we know that we have to divide our interest by 12 and multiply our interest our n by 12. If they say compound and quarterly, we know that we have to divide our interest by 4 and multiply by our n by 4. And if they say compound and weekly, we know that we have to divide our interest by 52 and multiply by our n by 52. If they say compound and daily, we know that we have to divide our, our interest by 365 and multiply our n by 365. That is the most important thing that we have to remind ourselves in the nominal interest rate and effective interest rate. We have to remind ourselves with the formula and the compounding periods. Okay, let's do this example. Okay, let's say I want to inv okay I want to invest 2,000 for one year at an earning an interest rate of 18% per annum. I want to invest this money. Then I will I want to invest in money compounded monthly. And other saving I want to invest it compounded monthly and annually. I have two options. I want to invest that money using these two options compounded annually and compounded monthly. You know that when they say compounded annually I have to use my interest as it is but if they say commanded monthly, it means have to divide my interest by 12 and multiply our n by 12. Okay, let me do this example, okay? Let's just focus on our component annually. If I invest my 12,000, so my 2,000, and in my interest rate of 0 0.15 and command that, and it means I have to use my interest as it is, and for how long? For one year. That's why you have one and you have 0 0.18 for 18%. And another option, I invest the same amount of 2,000 and I divide at any interest of 18% and for one year. That's why for, for because it's commanded month, I have to divide my interest by 12 and multiply N by 12. I have these two options. Okay, let, let's just have a look there. When you compound that annually, how, how much I got? I got 2,360. Wow, interesting. Okay, guess what? Now, if they say commanded monthly, guess what I get there? I got 2,391,24. It's quite a bit more than that one commanded annually. Wow. There is a problem now. I invested the same, very same amount for one year, earning an interest of 18% per 
but I got 2,160. But on the other side, I invested the very same 2,000. And my interest is 18%, compounded monthly, and, comm and my divide my interest by 12 and multiply it by n by 12. But now I got different amounts. What's the problem now? What if, okay, can you see now? If if it is commanded month, it means I receive the interest each and every month, then I got the interest. That's why I got a bigger number there. It means when when you invest your money commanded annually compared to the money commanded monthly, the money that commanded monthly, you get more interest because you receive an interest in each and every month. Okay, my problem here now, I got different amounts, but invested the very same money at the very same percent. But that one commanded monthly, I got more money. But what if I don't want to use commanded monthly and I want to I don't want to, to get an interest each and every month, but I still want to get that amount of 2391,24 cents, but I want to get that money. Okay? But if I don't want my interest to be calculated each and every month, it means I but my problem here. That 18% don't give me that money that I want there. If I if I don't want it to become one that month, but that 18% don't give me that money. Okay. What if I want to invest my 2000 for one year and get that money of 2,391,24 cent? But the problem is that 18% won't do that. Wow. What can I do? I don't want to use commanded monthly and I want to use commanded annually and get the very same amount but the problem 18% don't give me that money whoa hang on you know that it means I need another interest that will make that will give me that 2391,24 cent okay Therefore, I need another interest rate that's going to give me the same amount as commanded monthly. Hang on. Let us do this one now. Okay. The money obtained from the investment commanded monthly, we know that we got 2,391,24 cent. Okay. Let us calculate it as my interest. How, how much is my interest there? You know my interest it equal to money obtained, the total, minus the initial amount, the money that I already have initially. It means I have to take that 2,391,24 cent minus my initial amount of 2,000 and I got my interest of 391,24 cent. Wow. This is my interest. Hang on. What if I want... To express my interest in terms of percentage, let me express my interest in terms of of percentage. It means express my interest in terms of percentage. It could be ninety one comma twenty four cent divided by the original amount two thousand that I already have, and I got zero comma one nine five six two, of which is approximately nineteen comma five six two percent. It means if I got I was invested my money commanded monthly, I will got I get that 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 my interest will be 391,24 cent. But when you express it in terms of percentage, I got 19,562 percent. Wow, how nice. Okay, let me redo that one now. Let me let me invest the very same 2000 using this interest rate now and see what happened. Okay? Now let us use the new percentage for my investment. Okay. This is my invest investing 2000 and now I using the new percent now 0, 0, 0,19562 percent and invest my money for how long? For one year. Hang on, let us see the answer. Wow, how nice. Interesting. Now I got that money but I using the the, the new percent and it is compounded annually and for one year. Now I got that money. Wow, how nice. I got now 2,391,24 cent. Wow. Previously, 
I was investing 2,000, earning 18% compounded monthly. I divided by 18% by 12 and ten, multiply my exponent n by 12. But I got the same answer. Wow, it means I got the same answer. And I mean, these two things are equal. I even use my new percent and my previous percent, they are equal. Wow, how nice is mathematics. Okay, I also got what? 2,391, but in first case, I was using the different percent to 0 0.195,62 compounded annually. Here now, I used 18% compounded monthly, but I got the same amounts. Wow, how nice. Okay, you see now, I invested 2,000 using the interest of 0 0.195 commanded annually and I got this money and on the other side I have used 18% commanded monthly and I got that money. Wow! How nice! Now in conclusion as I have said I have used now 2000 invested 2000 any in interest of 0, 0,19562 for one year commanded annually and on the other side I have in Invested the very same amount of 2000 earning an interest of 18% commanded monthly. I have this thing, I have proven that they are, it is, they are equal. When you simplify this thing, you know, I will divide with 2000 on both sides, and I have with this thing 1 plus my new interest rate and the interest rate there of 18% divided by 12 exponent n. Wow, how can I give? What if I give my new percent a new name that we call effective interest rate because I have used it to generate the amount, the very same amount that I used when I, I was using 18% common net monthly. Wow, the generalization from the above, we come across with the new thing there. We come across with what we call the effective an interest rate formula. If we say one plus I, the interest rate that I I got to the interest rate, the new interest rate that I used to generate the very same amount with that one of commanded monthly, we called in an effective interest rate equal to what? The interest rate that I already have commanded annually, we called the nominal interest rate. It means the formula for Calculating the effective interest rate and nominal interest rate, we have 1 plus 1 plus effective interest rate is equal to 1 plus nominal interest rate divided by n exponent n. Then we know that our n there is stand for our compounding period. Remember, in, in that case, we have commanded monthly. We instead of that n, we use n for commanded monthly and we divide by compounding period and exponent commanding period. Then this is our formula, when we write in short, 1 plus 1 plus interest, effective interest rate is equal to 1 plus nominal interest rate divided by commanding period exponent n. Then we have to remind ourselves this thing. In the exam, we may be asked, we may be given the effective interest rate, then we'll be asked to convert effective interest rate to nominal interest rate. Or you may be given the nominal interest rate I and asked to convert it to effective interest rate. It means the most important thing here, you have to remind yourself this formula because you won't be given it in the exam. You have to know it by heart and you know the compounding periods, that one represented by N and you won't be given the compounding period in the test. You have to remind it by heart. Wow, thank you so much. I think you understand now the formula for converting the effective interest rate and the nominal interest rate. Wow, how nice in mathematics. This is the end of my lesson. Thank you so, so much for your attention. I hope you enjoyed this video. From now, you know the formula for effective interest rate and nominal interest rate, the convention. Okay, let's just enjoy the beauty of mathematics. Let us sing our nice song titled, How Nice is Mathematics? 
And Sisho Song said, failing maths is not an option. If it was, I was not going to take it. Mabu dead wumia magveru kanya go mathematics. Wow. Thank you so much. Feel free to call me if you have comments, if you have suggestion. Here is my email address, melulekshabalala at gmail.com. Here is my number, 0733-188-02. If you want any clarity in other topic in mathematics, feel free. I am ready to help you if you want or you need some help. Thank you so much.